Today, actually, we're hitting a major milestone on the Jordi Howe International Bridge. We're pouring the first lift of the southern footing for the main tower on the Canadian side. We're pouring it in three different stages for a number of reasons. The first and most important reason is due to the thermal control of the concrete. Whenever you pour concrete that's too deep, it ends up building up that heat that's generated through the hardening phase of the concrete. And by thinning the layers, you end up allowing more heat to escape and not build up and damage the concrete in the long term. Uh, the second reason is because of the geometry of the structure. Uh, our footing is divided into three sections that have distinct geometries. On the bottom, it's more, more or less a pad, straight pad. And then we have angled walls coming to the top and then a slanted leg that's sort of the starter for the tower leg. And in order to control that geometry better without having too much of a complicated construction methodology, we like to divide it into similar phases. The stage three pour, which is the last pour of the footing, is when we start into the tower construction. The south footing is supposed to be scheduled for early October, whereas for the north footing, it's early September. See, the concrete we're using is special for a number of reasons. First, we're using concrete that's rich in slag. That's a uh, ground granulated blast furnace slag, which is a recycled byproduct of the steel and iron industries here in Ontario. Uh, that material gives the concrete a stronger and longer lasting uh, lifespan, which also allows it to um, resist the chloride attack from the salts uh, and the de-icing material in the winter. So once you're getting into mass concrete pours, first of all, like I said, you have to control the temperature. So one of the more specialized things we have in this pour is the thermal control plan. We have cooling system inside the footing and that's a series of pipes that runs cold water and allows the concrete to cool as it's hardening and prevent excess heat from building up which could cause cracks in the long run. So for this pour we're looking at roughly 24 hours. If we uh, keep going as fast as we are now we might finish in a little bit sooner. So our footings are sitting on 12 piles. These piles are 36 meters deep. They go all the way in the ground. They go into the rock, the bedrock of the ground and that took quite a long time for us to develop those piles and pour the concrete for those elements and uh, the design phase for this footing lasted about two years and just about a year ago we started in the planning phase and that's developing your shop drawings and finding your contractors and the materials that you're going to use and putting things together like the drawings for our formwork that you see behind me our rebar is all prefabricated it all comes from a shop outside of windsor but we assemble it all on site in different elements and we have different rebar workers and contractors from around uh, the area putting that together in the footing. So today we have about 49 people directly involved in the pouring of this concrete. Obviously that's not including all the people behind the scenes doing design work and planning and scheduling and cost control and things like that. Uh, over the night shift we're gonna have 44 more people come in to help uh, take over the role and finish that pour. So actually I'm a civil engineer. I started in Montreal and I've been following this project for a few years and I've been hoping to work on it for quite a long time. Obviously, it's not every day that somebody has the opportunity to work on such an iconic project that's not only very massive, but will also have a huge impact on the area and the economy of the region. So I was working on a couple of bridges in New Zealand before coming back here and I was waiting for the right time to get on board so I could come and uh, contribute to this project.